right, everybody. Welcome back to episode number two of VUP, Very Unimportant People. This is the podcast where we give you opinions that no one asked for on topics that likely no one cares about. And before you even think about making fun of us, don't worry. We got you. We're here to make fun of ourselves so you don't have to. Each week, we will present an opinion or a few opinions about a useless topic, and we will either fight each other on it or we'll pretend to fight you on it. Either way, there's going to be a fight. The world has forgotten what opinions you can fight about, so we're here to remind you. Hi, I'm Lydia, and I'm wearing a Sherpa bucket hat. And I'm Courtney, and I stole from a hotel this week. And, and we we're your hosts. Your hosts. <laughs> One day every we'll time, get that. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, from the top. I'm going to look into your eyes as I say it. And, and we... we... <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, right. I didn't know who was counting. Go. One, two, three. And we... And we... we... <laughs> And, and we, we are your, are your hosts. hosts. Fuck you. <laughs> and we are your hosts. Dude, you know what happened? So I, I was having a nap and like I was kind of in between sleep because I was listening to this YouTube video about a girl who was talking about making friends in Germany. And then like, I think I fell, <laughs> I think I fell asleep. And then I was suddenly like really scared because I was thinking about intubators and about how like if you have an intubator down your throat and then you like wake up, you could technically, if the nurses don't get there on time, you could suffocate and like you could just die because the intubator is like in your throat and you're just like, and I was just, it was just really in my head about how like deep down your throat that thing must go and how like you could feel it like in your chest and it just really scared me and like I couldn't sleep anymore. <laughs> But I shouldn't be napping at six o'clock, so I mean, serves me right. <laughs> you live and you learn. I mean, really yeah, scary. I think it's kind of weird how, like, I guess human nature could kill you in that case, you know, yeah. because up until the point when you wake up, the tube is saving your life. Yeah. But then once you're conscious and you try to fight it, it could mm. kill you. And I find that really weird. How long can you suffocate for before you die? <laughs> <laughs> Like with an incubator, which is like, it's pumping oxygen into your lungs, right? Yeah, would so I don't know how you would die. Into a coma? Because you would go under. Okay, yeah. Oh. I don't think you could die. You'd probably faint. And then it would breathe for you. And that would be awful. Could you imagine if you're just stuck in a cycle of like waking up and then panicking and then fainting and then waking up and then panicking and then fainting? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that would be so bad. That sounds horrible. That literally sounds like an episode of Black Mirror or something like that. Like every time you go through some weird lucid dreaming where you just have no idea what happened and like you get out of your body and you like wander around the hospital and then you start choking for no reason. And or the can... zombie apocalypse comes and all the nurses leave the hospital and then you're still stuck on this like <gasps> intubation tube where like you're kept alive <laughs> and you're fed because they feed you, right? Yeah. How long could you stay like that and someone that? just would forget about you? And you wouldn't know. Every time you would wake up, you wouldn't know, right? You what wouldn't know just, like, take out the intubation tube. You'd probably die yeah. eventually. Probably. It would probably stop giving you IV fluids. Yeah, that's true. Right? But but the intubation tube could keep your lungs going for eternity. But you okay. would be dead. So, so here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> There's ever a zombie apocalypse... We need to make sure that either of us are not in the hospital and we okay. need to go back for each other and make sure that we're not stuck in the endless loop of waking up and then fainting. Okay, that sounds good. Honestly, while I'm there, like I might just unplug everybody else. If you're <laughs> if you're in it. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> I'm down. When the zombie apocalypse hits, the first thing we're doing is we're going to the hospital to unplug yeah. everyone. Oh, we got to yeah, give them a fighting so chance. <laughs> So they'll either just die then and there and mm. they'll never have to become a zombie or they'll be yeah. given a chance to run away if they're like able body enough to. Right? Yeah, but they probably won't be because I'm pretty sure if you have an intubator, you're in a coma, right? Like yeah. You're put into a coma. Oh, I can like feel it in my throat right now. Ugh. Ugh. Keeps me up at night, man. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> death is coming so soon. Every day you're closer to death. 
this whole oh, bottle. Wow, Holy <clears throat> shit. Wow. It was just one shot, barely. For the benefit of the audience, I'm drinking a Smirnoff peppermint bottle. And something really fun about this bottle is that the back of it and like most of the sides of it is actually a scratch and sniff. So if you scratch it, you can sniff it and it smells like peppermint. Wow. That's it. <laughs> Amazing. That user experience. All right. Should we get back to recording a podcast? I guess. We just wanted to thank you guys for coming back and listening to episode number two. We are totally new to this and we are learning everything as we go. We've never recorded an audio anything before, never edited it, never built a social media. So thank you for coming back and listening, even though we know that there was definitely room for improvement in episode one. <laughs> but we promise you guys that we only go up from here. So we hope that you guys come along on this journey with us and continue to bear with us because we are having so much fun creating this podcast and we hope you have fun listening. Also, I just wanted to add real quick that even if your listening experience was a little bit difficult, just know that editing out so much of us sounding like complete idiots was hard for us too. Like I learned a lot about the way I speak and the way I listen in that Same. podcast. And I learned that I have some room for growth. So as the podcast grows, we grow with it. And we want to thank you for being there for that journey. And it's like a totally weird experience as well to not only have to listen to yourself speak for like hours on end when you're editing, but then also to watch yourself speak is a very you know what I only experience. watched yeah I didn't okay yeah you're right I only watched the highlights I didn't watch the whole video because that was that was too much that was too too visceral for me it was a <laughs> lot it was a lot I needed a moment after I was like does my face look like that all the time and we're learning so much about ourselves I know, I know. just to get into redemption for idiots a little bit do we want to introduce redemption for idiots yeah, yeah before yeah, we definitely. get into it so we're introducing a new segment this week that will likely be around to stay, knowing us. Um, the segment <laughs> is called Redemption for Idiots. So this is a segment where we try to redeem ourselves for being idiots last week. Um, we mm -hmm. get heated, we get the facts wrong, but we're here to fact check ourselves. I would first like to say for my Redemption for Idiots, I feel like a lot of the idiotic things happened in my half of the podcast because we both just don't know anything about history. Um, but to start, I would like to acknowledge that a couple times in the podcast, Courtney asked me how the personality traits correspond with the month, and I flat out ignored her and just continued <laughs> on with my own tangent. <laughs> I would also like to recognize that I did not notice Lydia ignoring <laughs> me. <laughs> and I would like to also recognize that I cut out two times when she asked me. <laughs> and I just ignored her completely. So you might not have heard that, but if you did catch on to the fact that I was completely just like not listening to a word she said, um, you know, we're going to get better. <laughs> we're getting, it's hard, it's hard to listen, fully listen to somebody, but also try to do that Think of while a holding a conversation really. for an hour. Yes, I totally it's agree. Man. We should talk about Christopher Columbus. <laughs> we should talk about that incident. This should we start with Copernicus? Yes, I think we should go in the order that it happened, you know? At first, mm. we talked about Copernicus, and we didn't acknowledge his predecessor, Galileo. Okay, actually, I don't know enough about this to make a fact check. <laughs> Me neither. I just know that we got it wrong, right? Yeah. I don't okay. think Copernicus popularized the world being round. I think that's he did the not. conclusion that we came to. He Yes, Copernicus. This is for the benefit of the audience as well. I love saying that, the benefit of the audience. It just rolls off the tongue. Um, Copernicus actually popularized the theory that the Earth revolves around the sun, and so do the other planets. Because before that, we thought that the sun revolved around the Earth, and that the Earth was the center of the galaxy. That is not the case. And also, he had nothing to do with the Earth being flat or round. So <laughs> we were way off. But at least we knew his name, I guess. There you go. <laughs> we remembered something from history class. Yeah, we knew so. his name and that he had something to do with space. This might be a little political, but I all just, just wanted to correct myself that Christopher Columbus did not discover America. Mm. He was just the first European to do so. I just wanted to correct that. You can't discover a place where people have been has people for in there. 
Yeah, for hundreds of thousands of years. So I just totally wanted to right. fact check that a little bit. That's a good one. Also, um, from my segment, Troy did not show up for auditions the whole time I said rehearsals. He was auditioning mm-hmm. in his basketball uniform. He, w- he had changed out of it. So I'm sorry for that, if that confused anyone. He did show up to one thing in the basketball uniform, though, didn't he? Because Gabriella was in her lab coat. Do you remember that? And they set off that smell. I think that's at the end, though. Yeah, it is. You're right. It's not from auditions. Yeah. yeah. Or rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was Redemption for Idiots. I look forward to seeing you again next week on this segment. <laughs> many, many more to come. Thank uh, you for please feel free with to, us. Yeah, and feel free to call us out if yeah. uh, you realize mistakes or if you want to fact check us and we will include you on redemption for idiots okay time for opinions and get into it, get into it. um would you like to kick it off or did you want me to kick it off i can start this time okay so this week i had a lot of time to think after recently getting fired from last episode if you remember um i just really have been coming to terms with the fact that making friends is a lot harder than I thought it was. In university, in high school, even in elementary school, making friends was so easy. It was like second nature for me. Like the person I would sit beside would become my best friend. People were begging to be my friend. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) But like you're, you're kind of not. In my head, you are a very social person. You are very good at making friends. When we were roommates in university, you made so many, like every week you'd be like, oh no, my new friend, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Like, how are you, how are you meeting all these people? I honestly have no idea because in my head, it was through other people, through other social people who were introducing me to these new people. So that's why like every time I came, every time I told you about this new person, I hadn't firsthand met them. I secondhand met them or something like that. So in my head, I have this different perception of friend making, whereas I I meet one person and they introduce me to the world. You know what I mean? (laughs) But I mean, that's an accomplishment in itself because it means that the first person that you've met likes you enough to introduce you to other people. They're like, oh, this is a cool person. Let's introduce them to other cool people I know. So that is an accomplishment. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's lev- oh. you're leveling up. Yeah. So that was life for me in, in first year university when me and Courtney were roommates. I was on top of the world, you know? And then a few years go by. Well, yeah, no, no. we don't have to get into that. <laughs> I was very much known on top of the world. It's actually a very Neither low moment. Were. Yeah. 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 It was actually pretty hard. We were going through some stuff. Anyways. So... Ever since then, it's been, you know, a few years. We've been out of school. I went to college. Courtney was in uni, living with her best friend, living her best life. Well, I'm her best friend, but... Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. Yeah, I mean, your name is still Rumi in my phone, if that says Aww. anything. Oh, um, here's a sea dog. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit off track. We shouldn't be worried about whose best friend is who. Um, we, anyways, we were on top of the world, okay? In a sense, we were on top of the world. And then I graduated from college. It was a two-year program and I had to go into the real world. I just didn't expect making friends to be so difficult. Uh, It's not like I'm 30 years old where like you kind of cap at making friends. I'll get into that a little bit later, but I read an article about how when you turn 30, your life kind of changes apparently or some somewhere in that zone, like your life just changes where making friends is almost impossible (laughs) from what I've read. We're 22 years old and for some reason, it's just impossible to find people who you get along with in workplace settings. And I think this is because school is such a comfortable place. You know, everybody is on the same wavelength. Everybody is the same age. You know, they're the same age. You know, they have similar experiences, similar life experiences because of their age. And there's a really good mix of work and play, which is recess (laughs) or walking to school and doing work together and like doing projects together and stuff like that. So you have the chance to grow as work acquaintances and work together on yourself you know and hang out together and see what both of that is like and you work on the same projects so you run into the same problems that you can solve together which strengthens the bond that you have with the person you sit next to randomly you have the same knowledge level because you're in the same age group so like nobody feels really above another person 
And I think another big point is that nobody's making money and nobody feels like they're making more money than another person. And I, I haven't run into that specific problem, but I think that causes a lot of issues for adults where it's hard to hang out with their superiors because of the difference in the money that they make. I'll comment. I had thoughts, but I just wanted to let you finish. Thank you. I think that as I was listening to you talk, it occurred to me that school doesn't teach us very many life skills. It teaches us a lot of like knowledge, like Pythagorean theorem that we'll never use, (laughs) but it doesn't teach us actually things that we can take into our lives. And I feel like that might be part of the problem because both in school and university, you're in environments where they kind of force you together with other people and they're Mm -hmm. trying to help you build social connections. You know, your first week in university is all about that. Residence is all about that. All of high school, you're forced to sit next to other people, work in groups, hang out together during recess, all of these things. And then once first year ends, nobody cares anymore about if you have friends and nobody's trying to help you make them. So, but you've never built the skill because up until that point, I think that they've been trying to do it for you and help you through it, but never taught you how to do it yourself. Man, that's a good point. No wonder I'm struggling. Like, (laughs) it's so different out here than it is when they're like, okay, group project and like text each other after school and do this, do that. And I feel like having a shared enemy as well helps a lot. The shared enemy could be sure, right? And then you bond over that. And also in school, you're uh, right next to each other, right? You have the proximity where you're forced to get to know each other. You have unplanned interactions, you know, like you're walking through the hallway. You see someone you know, you say, hey, you talk, whatever. And then it's this whole thing that you can talk about later. But it's all in this forced environment (laughs) where it's just like, you are here to make friends. It's kind of true what they say. I just realized that the friends you make in high school and university are the friends that you're going to have for the rest of your life because that's the only place that anyone's forcing you to be friends with anybody. I also think that at work, it's kind of different where you're getting paid for the person you are. Like in university, you can go out and like drink and party with people to make friends, but you can't do that at work because there has to be some level of being professional so that you can Mm. keep your job and make your livelihood. And that brings me to another point. I think that at work, it's also difficult because the job market that we have today doesn't allow for you to pick a job with people that are going to have similar interests. It's kind of, you just got to take whatever you get. And in a lot of places, it's going to be such a hodgepodge of different people with different interests, and you're not necessarily going to like them. But then you have to work all the time to be able to live, and you don't have time to do other stuff in your free time to meet people. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. you're kind of stuck in this limbo where you can't be friends with the people at work, but like you don't have time to make other friends. Yeah. And I feel like to add on to your point of having work friends and keeping a certain level of professionalism, I think another layer of that is also what where does networking stop and friendship begin because it might feel like a transactional relationship where like I'm friends with you because obviously I like you but also maybe you'll give me some connection into into the future you know maybe maybe we'll do a lecture together on how successful this podcast is (laughs) you know what I mean like you never know you never know if someone's just using you or if I'm using someone else it's just kind of, it just kind of turns into this untrustworthy kind of thing where you don't know if you're real friends or not, which is really kind of sad. <laughs> I can totally relate to that because in your master's in grad school, they'll introduce you to a bunch of people that have similar interests to you. Like if you meet someone, they'll be like, oh, you should reach out to this person because they have interests that are similar to yours. So you're mm-hmm. always being introduced to people who have similar interests to you. So that should equal a friendship, but then you're never sure where the professionalism ends and when a friendship starts. I talk to people right now that I've met in grad school Mm -hmm. and I have no idea if we're friends or not, or if we're just (laughs) both being professional and both just trying Uh, to maintain a relationship for professional leads. I have no idea if I'm their friend. I have no idea if they're my friend, but we talk to each other on a regular basis. Oh, it's very strange. Do you think you're gonna do you think you're gonna stay friends after you're finished your masters? I have no idea. 
Mm. I really don't. Maybe. It de- <laughs> I, I guess, I mean, it depends what we all do with our lives, you know? Yeah, if I go yeah, on to true. continue my education, I'll probably keep in touch with people who also continue their education, but it's also just a continuation of this. Are we have do we have a professional relationship so that we can collaborate or are we friends and I just don't know oh my god I don't know either that's so confusing that it was like that in the theater industry as well where it's like obviously you want to be friends with these people and obviously a lot of them are really really cool and you want to hang out with them but at a certain point it's like am I am I just useful to you because of my connections are you useful to me because of your connections? Sometimes I can't even tell it in myself. I'm like, do I actually like this person or am I just trying to like schmooze up to them just to be like, hey, let me in on your next show. Let me know if you need a, a designer. <laughs> yeah, it gets really, the hard waters to navigate, you know? So I can totally understand how as you get older, it gets even harder to make friends because of so many other factors that come into your life. When people turn 30, which is the age that I read is when it becomes really hard to make friends there's a lot of other factors such as you want to really focus on your career you know you don't have time anymore to like go out hang out with your friends and then spend an entire day hungover hopefully I get to still do that but I feel like but I feel like it's just not as possible and if you have kids then you have your kids to take care of and if you have a husband or a wife or a significant other, then you have that person to spend most of your time with. And then it becomes this whole other thing where if you make a friend with a couple, it's like matchmaking for two people. If you get along with the wife, does the husband get along with your partner? If two people don't like both of the two people, you're probably not going to see each other again. You have to be in like a, a perfectly sync relationship. And also, okay... I think that our um, tolerance for bullshit people hits gets really, really high as we get older. Like, I already feel it right now. If I get bad vibes from someone, I'm already like, no, I'm not even going to try to entertain this friendship anymore just because I, I can value myself. I know I don't have time to waste <laughs> on people who are going to manipulate me, on drama queens. I don't know, just people who, who don't have your best interests at heart. And like, as you get older and older, you just really become a little jaded when it comes to friend making because you don't want to waste your time essentially you see a red flag and you just run in the other direction so that could also definitely be a part of it 100 percent. like we're all tired <laughs> yeah we're all tired. exactly exactly and that's the thing i think that it's hard i think social media has made it harder because I think that there's pressure to have a lot of friends because of social media and to be this so, super social person. But I just, I don't think it's realistic. And I think it it's is not. quality over quantity. I mean, I've always, I think that I've had a very different perspective to friends as you have. In my life, I feel like relationships for me is, it's, all, it's I don't want to say it's a quota, but it's like, all I need is to have the bare minimum that I need to feel like <laughs> I can socialize and then I have I have like little interest in gaining more friends after that so my friends haven't changed that much over the years just because I feel like I have them and I don't have the energy to put into finding new people and I love the people I know Mm -hmm. and I've already learned about them you don't have to go through that awkwardness of meeting somebody and trying to get to know them and be super weird I think, I think I feel a little pressure right now to find new friends because I'm living in a new place where none of my old friends exist. Yeah. And it's a weird place for me because I've always had this, you know, idea around relationships in my life where if I have it, I'm good. I don't need to put any more effort into it. So it's like trying to learn how to put effort into it again mm. while you're in a global pandemic <laughs> that stops yeah. you from seeing people in person. So it, it's challenging. I hate the global palindrome. <laughs> Have you seen that meme? The like global panda word. express. <laughs> <laughs> There's a pedicure going on right now. The glue of the freaking, the freaking, what's another P word? There's a pansexual happening. <laughs> God. <laughs> a white man. No. no! <laughs> <laughs> fucking love a shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't actually like okay. girls. Maybe that's an opinion for another. Oh, reason, but I don't think it's shut like up. A, you don't like. I think. Oh. I think. 
I think it's very male no. humor. I actually don't find it that tasteful. Really? That's mm-hmm. so interesting. I read something the other day that said that New Girl is like the perfect show for showing that this um manic pixie dream girl TV trope is completely dead. And like they show uh, Jess as this actual character who's deep, has a backstory, this, that, blah, 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 feels emotions, all the shit, all these movies that all these characteristics that other movies such as the one that they used okay no hate to this movie i love this movie but they used um Scott pilgrim versus the world and they used oh, ramona goodness. flowers right okay. everybody loves ramona flowers but she's such a manic pixie dream girl where she just kind of has no backstory she's just this like put on a pedestal girl everybody just kind of loves her for no reason and some boy it's always the same story where it's some boy who is like hates himself and he's super sad and like he like has nothing going for his life and then he meets this amazing super pixie girl like who's alternative wears funky clothes changes hair colors every week and suddenly his life changes and he just needs her in his life that happens in a couple of movies (laughs) so there was this whole article about how new girl kind of breaks the mold turns jess who is the classic man of pixie dream girl just because of how like quirky she is into a real person into a real character who has depth and is still the main character but she's still yeah she just like has a lot of depth and is an actual interesting person and it, they say that it kind of killed the that uh character trope i believe is the right word yeah so it's I kind of nothing. crazy that you hate it <laughs> i have nothing against jess i think that she was a good character i let me just preface this with i've never actually watched it full through Janaid has watched it and I've so much sense. tuned in while he's watching it and been like hmm I don't really love it and not really paid much more attention to it but I never had any problem with Jess it was her roommate the guy the Nick Nick I don't like Nick yeah I think he's it's, I don't know how to explain it it's kind of I, weird because he plays into the whole sad boy trope meets manic PC yeah i think he's like kind of life. manipulative and he's kind of a schmuck he and a for schmuck. some reason everyone is in love with him <laughs> he's this schmuck that doesn't care about himself and has no ambition and yeah. he traps jess not traps jess but jess gets into this relationship her? and she like yeah. knows what she wants she has a career she's super nice she's an awesome person and then somehow is just in this relationship with this really weird, manipulative, <laughs> I know, unstable I know. person. I wish you would watch the show. It's a whole thing how she's like, I hate that my type is trashy men. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's just his character then. Yeah. Just trashy. Yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah, just maybe a I need to watch trashy, it. Like, yeah, you should watch it. He like tries I just to think like. There's so many better shows out there with better characters and. <laughs> Better Ooh. messages. Brooklyn oh, Nine Nine. Oh, New Girl has Shit's such good Creek. characters. Ooh, Shit's Creek is fire. There's so many out there. There's so many out there I that like have Shits good Shits messages, Shits. have good characters, and do no harm. And I like those mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. New Girl does no harm. I must. I must say that. Well, I didn't. The way that, you're though. putting it, it sounds like it does do harm. <laughs> but again, I only tuned in for a couple episodes, and I'm probably taking it way out of context. But that's <laughs> how I feel. That's you know, kind of how New Girl is. Thinking about this weekend what? when I introduced you to Pirates of the Caribbean and <laughs> you proceeded to watch the entire one, two, and three yeah, on repeat for like seven days straight. <laughs> yeah. And day. everyone you met, you're like, have you ever heard of Pirates of the Caribbean? <laughs> and they were like, and yeah. Like, Obviously. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I have this theory. <laughs> They're like, I don't even remember what happened in the movie. What? Come over and watch it right now. I'm listening to it in one headphone while listening to the lecture in the other. I love Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> you were so late to the game. My life. Those, to this day, that's my favorite movie series. Fuck you, Harry Potter. Pirates so of the bad. Caribbean. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. Excuse me? <laughs> Lord. <laughs> Lord. Are you having a I'm stroke? mixing like southern and then adding the T at the end of Lord. Lord. I think you just created Lord. a new dialect. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mix of like Cardi B in the Deep South. <laughs> nice. Uh, nice. Lord. That was um a lot. I'm sorry about that. 
<laughs> okay, I have one final point. Okay, go, go. go. <laughs> we got so off track. Go for it. I know, but this has to do with your final point. So we are kind of on track. So, oh, wow. Oh, dude, I wish I could talk more about Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I love that shit. We'll box it. We'll put it. We'll put it on the list for another yeah. episode. Unpopular opinion. Stay tuned. Pirates of the Caribbean is the best movie franchise ever created. Hell yes. Coming up. <laughs> to a podcast site near you. My last point about making friends being uh, difficult is um, going off of what you were saying about social media and about how it looks like people have a lot of friends on social media. I actually looked into um, different types of places where people can meet friends, right? And it's all online. It's all like Tinder, this meetup thing, this like um, Groupon apparently you can meet people through Groupon and through Facebook groups and stuff like that and you can like just make a location meet up there do an activity together and like if you vibe you vibe and then meet you up. become yeah 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 and then yeah, you like, kind of that. become friends yeah it sounds like a really good time honestly but there was an argument against it that says that people aren't going out of their way to meet other people because social apps like that actually encourage the commoditization of people did i say that word right (laughs) i think you did i think you did and that makes sense and that makes sense because all of if you go on i mean okay i'm gonna agree with the point and then i'm gonna contradict it but just just bear with me i agree with you that most of these sites if you're looking you know if you find somebody on the site you have to do something that costs money is that what you're talking about or you have to pay for a subscription. What are you talking? Can you explain the point? Hmm, before I... That's an interesting point. No, I, that's not what exactly what I meant, but that's interesting. Um, what, I, what I meant was that it's, it looks like there's an abundance of people to meet all the time. And so people are like, eh, like today I don't need to meet anybody because there's always people to meet. Like I always have the opportunity to meet someone because they always have access to this app. And so you feel like people are easy to come by and like a good friend is easy to come by because you like have this expectation, right? So yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of like a downfall. It's capitalism, but people. (laughs) So sad. So yeah, that's why people say it's hard to make friends these days is because you have this illusion in your head that it's so easy because there's people everywhere who want to be friends, but you never, you never actually take action on it and you don't think about how maybe like 85% of the people who you meet aren't going to be your type of people. You know what I mean? You're not going to get along with everybody. That's just fact. Yeah, a lot of people just don't consider that. So that people makes a lot of are sense. money. <laughs> but also, you do need to normally do activities that do cost money. Yeah, I think I was thinking about monetization, not commodification. Mm-hmm. But that makes yeah. sense, thinking about friends in the same way that you think about commodities. Yeah. Like you like- go to the store and there's so many options of flour that are always available to you, just like how you can go on an app and there's so many people in the area that you can just become friends with. You can say, hey, and you're yeah. friends with. Which isn't yeah, true because exactly. you don't like most people you meet. And then one last thing that I read about um, why it's hard to make friends these days is because people believe that their personality is a static thing. They believe that they are set in their ways, which this does relate to last week's podcast about horoscopes and about how you read about yourself. And you're like, okay, this is who I am. For example, I'm a Libra and apparently I am very vain, right? To be fair, I did shower for this episode, (laughs) but, but typically I'm not that, I wouldn't categorize myself as a very vain person. I'll go out in public. I don't. I don't wear makeup, first of all. I don't know if that counts for anything, but, like, I don't really normally put stuff on my face, and, like, that's because I have acne, so it's a whole other thing, but I, I don't, I don't, I just don't really dress up or, like, try too hard <laughs> in general. I don't think I'm, like, too vain of a person, but the problem is that people believe that what they are is what they are, and there's no changing, and so, doing something that doesn't align with their values or what they believe they are, which might make a new friend, actually hinders them. And it doesn't allow them to make friends outside of their thing. Like if you think you're an introvert, then you're like, okay, I like spending time uh, alone on the weekend. If you're an introvert, that doesn't mean you hate spending time with people. You know, just because you're an introvert doesn't mean you don't need to see people every once in a while. Like it's Everyone good, it's needs good human connection people. at some point. Some people need more, some people exactly. need less, some people need breaks, but everyone needs it on some level yeah exact people every all the all the time especially during this um palindrome crave human connection more than ever right like 
so yeah, that was that was pretty much the last point there. Just that you know your your personality isn't one thing; it's always changing. Growth doesn't stop after thirty. Obviously, you're set in your ways. You know what you want in a friend, but I think there could definitely be room to still continue to grow and like continue to change your perceptions on who your friends could be and like what you want. A hundred percent. I think that we're always growing and changing and learning. And yeah, exactly. So if you believe in horoscopes, (laughs) check yourself. (laughs) <laughs> and check check your birth chart <laughs> maybe got around somewhere check, check all aspects of your personality and see and pick and choose honestly I think that's a good lesson is to pick and choose what relates to you because a lot of the things I hate to say this but a lot of the things are generalizations yes they are and you just have to pick you have to find the values which most align with your own and then just roll with that but don't stick to it you know like if your values change that's totally fine yeah i think that that's looking I, I mean we're totally going back but just one point about horoscopes i think that looking at horoscopes as a list for you to either say yes or no to is a completely fine thing to do i just don't believe yes. in like prescribing to a horoscope to lead your mm-hmm. life but you can look at it as you know a list what? to learn more about yourself and i think that's fine that's cool i think that's cool too Good for you what a good <laughs> conclusion we've come to i know right look at us just finding middle ground everywhere we go all right. I think this week we're both a little bit drunker. Yes. <laughs> and a little bit more experienced. I donated to Wikipedia. Oh, wow. Good job. I went on my spam email. So I was uh, looking in that email. And I guess my one Wikipedia donation was with that email. <laughs> and they were like, we are begging you. Like, these were the titles of the email. They said, we are begging you. We are asking you one last time. Our final email. This is it for us. These dramatic ass email titles. And I was like, oh my fucking God. Like, you didn't have to go that hard. I already donated. Like, what are you Listen, doing? if someone is on Wikipedia looking for facts, they probably are not a multimillionaire. They probably don't have the money to be you Wikipedia, you probably have more money than they do. Just they don't though. They don't have any ad revenue. Really? Oh my god, my dad. Why do they need money? money? Um, I don't know. To keep their oh, people just know what it is. Post it's too No, but but they actually have fact checkers. They actually have people who go back in and like fix shit. So like for example, one time I said that Harry Styles was married to Louis Tomlinson. They had fact checkers go in and delete that because obviously it's not true. And obviously the band was going to sue. After I graduated. So I graduated my undergrad this year. Congratulations. In a global... Pussy. (laughs) In a global pizza hut. I I graduated during the pizza hut. And Guelph emailed me like two months after I graduated. And they were like, I know these are hard times, but I know that we can all come together to help Guelph students get through this Pizza Hut. Please donate $20. After they had just taken over 20 grand from me over the past four years and then refused to lower tuition for students doing online courses, they asked me, the unemployed person, (laughs) collecting CERB, living with my parents at that point, if I had twenty dollars, yeah. no, that's I don't so have twenty dollars for you. Oh, that's lower so tuition. You didn't have a graduation. You saved millions of dollars. You think it costs millions of dollars for grad? A hundred percent. I bet 100%. it does. You're right. That's whack. Um, my, my the college that I graduated from sent me that as well. I was just as angry as you. It made literally no sense. And like the day before that, I went downtown and I saw this huge billboard in Young and Dundas Square for our college how much do you think that costs take down the billboard make back the millions of dollars <laughs> and then use it for wh- where so i don't it's I, it's honestly inappropriate to ask us for that money that's yeah. so rude <laughs> you tricked us into spending four years to get a degree that did not get me a job <laughs> you tricked me into paying you twenty thousand dollars for a line on my resume that gets me nothing and now you're asking me for another twenty dollars to support the other people that you're trick i mean 
when I say trick, I say that lightly because I am continuing my education and I do love school and I appreciate mm. academia for a lot of things, but also not for a lot of things. We'll get into that another day, but you know, it's just, it is inappropriate and it's, 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 it's disrespectful really when mm -hmm. an institution that makes millions of dollars a year. You don't need the money. Oh, Donate so to nice. us. Give me $20. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck? G give me back the money you took from me. Give me back the years of my life. Welcome, everyone, to the second half of this very long podcast. We just learned about Lydia's opinions on how making friends are hard, and it's okay, everyone. Making friends is hard. Don't feel this bad. Is a shared we all struggle. Opinion. It is a yeah. shared opinion. It's a shared struggle, so mm -hmm. just talk about it. It's okay. Yeah. And now, we're here for my opinion of the week, which is that front lawns are the most useless and confusing byproduct of Western human society. <laughs> Took me a long time to phrase that because I didn't know how to. It was like Western was society. So <laughs> Western society has done so much harm and it's hard to, I don't want to override all that harm that they've done, but there are certain byproducts of Western human society that make no sense. And front lawns yeah. is a front runner in my mind. I don't get it. So to contextualize my point, Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you a brief history of how the front lawn came to be. Yay! I'm so excited. So, the idea originated in medieval times in France and Britain, where they would use grasslands around medieval castles, mm. um, and they would keep them clear of trees so that guards had an unobstructed view and they could see enemies coming. So that's kind of where they originated. And because they were kind of like located around castles, they became this sign of wealth. Um, so during the 16th century Renaissance, they became the symbol of wealth um, and only rich landowners had them. But they were usually planted with chamomile or thyme. They weren't planted with grass yet. Oh, huh, that's cool. But they kind of became this artistic expression. That's awesome. With like the flowers and the mowing. Oh, so they were yes. considered to be kind of an art of mm. sort at that time, which is kind of respectable in a way, I guess. Um, and so immigrants from Europe came to North America and brought the idea of the lawn with them and also the seeds. They would sew them into the hems of their clothes and into their sleeves and stuff. Is that where oh. the term sewing seeds comes from? I don't know. <laughs> I swear this is a real thing. <laughs> I know the expression, I just don't know where it comes from. <laughs> it's all the song, yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, so they brought them with them, but the idea didn't really, like, take place or build roots in Western society until Good after, pun. thanks, until after <laughs> the Second World War. So mm -hmm. after the war, it was like, I like to call it the perfect storm that happened, okay? okay. So you had all these soldiers coming home from war, and you needed mm -hmm. to give them affordable housing for themselves and their families. Definitely. You also had this like move to suburbia and in the 1950s was when the first cookie cutter neighborhoods were built in the US, um, which oh, was kind man. of, I think, to fuel like this post-war need for more housing. And so these cookie cutter homes that were built, that were initially built, came with front lawns. Part of the terms of buying one of those homes was to maintain that front lawn, like you had to keep it and you yes. couldn't fence it in. They forbid them from fencing it in. And then they gave wow. them a bunch of information about the importance of having a front lawn. Okay. That's interesting. So it is interesting. And you have all these soldiers who are trained to um, really respond to obedience and structure and neatness. Uh, interesting. So it kind of tied into that. And then you also had a po post-war decline in chemical production that they used for like bombs and stuff like that and then they had nothing else to use it for because the war was over so they're like ah oh, we need to sell chemicals to somebody so they kind of created this whole market of lawn fertilizers so that they could continue that market what? and <laughs> make profits no off of people way. yeah fertilizer yeah. all started because of the war i think That's i mean so cool. front lawn fertilizer 
I don't know yeah, the history yeah. of agricultural fertilizer, but front lawn fertilizer was like a post-war era thing. That's so and then, smart. Honestly, good for the like marketing people who were behind that. Sorry, go on. That's genius. No, it was <laughs> smart, but it, it, I mean, it did, it did a lot of bad. So in addition to these soldiers coming home, the suburbanization, the need to use chemicals somewhere, people were really afraid of communists. So it was this time of conforming. Which I think is really ironic that people were scared of communists so they conformed to what everyone else was doing so that they wouldn't look like the odd person out so that they wouldn't be labeled a communist. But conforming to what everybody else is doing is, in a sense, kind of a communist thing to do. So that's kind of how they came to fruition in Western society was like this perfect storm of things that happen. But now Mm. we basically have this crop that was taken from its native environment which i don't know where that is stay tuned for grass? next week are you talking about grass grass yeah grass so they took Ooh. it from its native environment and because people brought it here the grass that we have on our front lawns did not exist here before people bought it, brought it here what? so people brought it here and then they put it in a place when you take a crop from somewhere where it grows natively and put it in a place where it doesn't grow natively, you're going to have to work really hard to try to alter the environment that it's in to keep it alive because it will not naturally survive there. So we've taken Mm -hmm. this crop out of its natural environment, put it in this one, and now we're funneling so many resources and so much time into keeping this random crop alive (laughs) (laughs) for no reason. For no Killed reason. Here, I have some stats here, okay? So, let me hear them. turf grass, in 2002, it covered almost 2% of U.S. land area, which doesn't sound a lot like a lot, but technically, front lawns are America's largest crop. Take that in. What? America's largest crop is not even used for, like, human consumption. It has no purpose. America's That's largest so crop. so messed up. 40 million <laughs> acres are front 40 lawns. 40 million acres. Dang. Yes, yes, and to make it green, nine billion gallons of water a day are used on front lawns. That is offensive to people who need clean water. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's literally one of my points is that we have people in the world, people in our own countries that don't have access to clean, safe water. Yeah. And then we take clean, safe water and we dump it on on grass for no reason it's become kind of like this manipulation thing where if you don't maintain your front lawn you're like hated and ostracized by your neighborhood because there's there's this idea that if your house doesn't look good it brings down everybody else's property value so if you don't maintain your front lawn you're actually costing your neighbors money so then you're manipulated Mm. into maintaining a front lawn quick anecdote yeah my family once got one of those letters in the mail saying that somebody had complained about our front lawn being overgrown and it was impeding bylaws of my suburb and that we had to (laughs) yeah there's bylaws for it yeah and we had to cut it and we had to like start taking way better care of it oh man that kind of pisses me off that the fact that having a front lawn is kind of a communist idea and that we're still kind of subscribing to not that communist idea governing. it's not a, it was it's not a communist idea well, having a front on- lawn was a way to be not called a communist but i also kind of support communism so courtney no <laughs> Communism didn't work in Poland. <laughs> Maybe, I, okay, I don't support communism, but I'm it's not a good completely theory. against it. It's a good theory. Yeah. It has, there was it has, a lot of it has some good points. It has a lot of yeah, good points. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're, you're not wrong. I have read the manifesto, and I was like, I'm convinced. I was like, this is good shit. And then I remember the foundation is built in, like, a good place, you know? Yeah. Having respect it for is. everybody and wanting everyone to be equal and cared for. And taken mm, care of, but the humans are are naturally very greedy sometimes, and mm. when people come into that kind of power and succumb to greed, it's just you're unable to have a society where everybody's equal because then people value themselves higher than others. You know, because I think the there was an example of doctors being the same, paid the same amount as like grocery store workers. It just I've heard this argument. I've heard this argument. 
but mm-hmm. think of a world just for a moment where every doctor is a doctor because they have a desire to save lives and not because they get paid 400k a year yeah you might have better doctors anyway they would this is feel getting like fulfilled in their jobs it's getting a little political for seriously not okay, that you're serious right. we should because we're not up. that serious we should, no it's not that serious at all front lawns aren't that serious it's not about that okay <laughs> let's forget the communist down. part okay <laughs> okay anything we said about communism we take it back well we don't take it back we just we might cut it out and if it's still in here take it with a grain of salt we don't normally get yes. that political but here we are <laughs> we have opinions um Anyways. Anyways, so front lawns. Front lawns. <laughs> yeah. We're on, you were talking about water and about how a shit ton of water, of clean Nine water. Nine billion gallons towards- a day on front lawns, which is wild. And then we're also fertilizing them, which is introducing really bad chemicals into our ecosystems. And if, like, anyone who has taken any courses in agriculture or plant science or soil science knows that biodiversity is the key to everything and Mm -hmm. by planting one crop just across your front lawn and then killing anything else that grows there Mm -hmm. is a really bad idea yeah it doesn't really make sense Mm -mm. like biodiversity protects you from like like pests pest management it's less labor intensive the crops can like work in a way that help each other but we're just Mm -hmm. ignoring all that and we're literally fighting nature every single day like nature just wants to take over that space and like reclaim it and take care of itself but we're like no so we're basically just stopping a proper ecosystem from being created on our 100 percent 100 percent and they're also ugly (laughs) <laughs> That's really important. That they're, they're, they're not they're not nice to look at they're very boring yeah they are they're just green i don't <laughs> like them i'm really against if i when if i ever succumb to property ownership if i'm ever that successful in my life as a gen z <laughs> are we gen z's we're in between i think we can call ourselves gen z we're zillennials we're on tiktok <laughs> Anyways, if I ever succumb to property ownership, mm. I will not have a front lawn. What I will not maintain my front lawn. lawn. I don't know. Oh, I haven't decided. I think I've heard that moss front lawns could be cool. Ooh, you just like cool. let your front lawn be covered with moss. Um, I'm into the wildflower idea too. Because, you know, it's help really the pretty. bees. Help the bees. Yeah, exactly. The bees and then little mice can live in the wildflowers too. Like they create nests in the tall grass. Isn't that so cute? That is really cute. Tall grass. There can be a little nest. That brings me to another point, like removing leaves from your front lawn. It serves no purpose other than a human purpose. Like it it will kill the grass. Yes. But we've already established that the grass has no purpose. But if you leave it there, it helps soil I think it helps soil biodiversity. It gives animals like a place to burrow and they decay and they replenish the soil with nutrients. Like they're meant to be there. It's an ecosystem. They're meant to fall in the soil. They're meant to stay there. There's a purpose for that. But we spend so many hours just breaking them up and then putting them somewhere else. Where do they take your leaves? I have no idea. I think they just take them to the dump and they just like say it helps to, it helps to let the rest of like the plastics and, and papers, you want to know? Like, you want to know a fact? You know? Yeah. Do you ever think to yourself, when you have like a food scrap, if you throw it in the garbage, it's okay because it's a food scrap and it's just going to compost in the landfill? Yeah. Yeah. That's false. It won't. They it cover up do. the land. They cover up the landfills in a way that stops air from getting in, so nothing that you put in there is actually ever going to break down. I, I won't say ever, but it's going to take a lot longer than it would oh otherwise. My God. So when you put food scraps in the garbage, they're just going to stay food scraps because they like seal the landfills so that you don't smell it. Oh, wow. What? And so that they don't (gasps) produce, I think it's methane when things break down. Yeah, they seal them. Oh my God, dude, that's insane. Right? Wow. You know what's crazy about the leaves too? Is that Mm -hmm. technically if you let the leaves 
do their thing, they would be acting as the fertilizer. Like they would be acting Isn't as that the, the thing that helps thing? <laughs> it helps it grow, helps it turn into a healthy, green, thick, luscious lawn. And then we're just like, mm, actually, fuck you. Like get out and of that here. That is capitalism at work for you. It really they is. Say, <laughs> you could do this for free, but we're actually gonna convince you to just take that thing away so that you have to buy the thing that we made for that purpose. And that's why I hate front lawns. (laughs) My last point that I have on here is used to be an expression of art, now is a means of control and manipulation. And that's just really how I feel (laughs) about front lawns. (laughs) I thought a lot about this. If you can't tell, I spent a lot of my time thinking about front lawns. Oh my god, you're like, and I'm just like control and manipulation. Do you know that a person on average spends 70 hours a year mowing their lawn? Oh, Just that's too much. That's way Ooh, too much. Let's, let's bring in the freaking lawn mower. Technically, that doesn't need to exist. And it just adds to the gasoline. And it just adds to the freaking CO2 in the atmosphere. Okay. Like, but grass, which is supposed to make your air cleaner, is technically making it dirtier. Because you have to mow it. <laughs> and then you put chemicals on it. Yeah, so like and it goes into the natural landscape just becomes completely unnatural and kills a lot yeah, of natural what the life. Fuck. Oh my god. Okay, if your mind is blown like mine is, leave a comment. <laughs> Say I'm mind blown because I've never thought this deeply into into front lawns. Oh my god. It's a problem. It's a real problem. It is. Holy shit. What would we use instead of front lawns? Okay, here's an idea for people who don't like the idea of front lawns but have bylaws or mean neighbors that will mm. you know give them a shade <laughs> for not maintaining their front lawn My let your have... front lawn just grow let it do its thing but just mow it no one's gonna know that it's not just grass in there as long as it's green no one will know yeah that's true like let the weeds grow but just mow mm. it every week Mm, that's so true and you can get lawn mowers that aren't gasoline powered i have one of those at my house it's just blades and you just have yeah. to push it that's it and it's totally it's way better it doesn't make so much noise you know do you ever wake up on a sunday it's like 8 30 in the morning and someone has to power up their freaking lawn mower and it wakes you up i don't know if this is like an old lady thing but like shut up <laughs> Like it's a Sunday. It's it's the day of rest, god damn it. You know what's weird? I was looking, I was researching for this argument and I was looking on I think it was it was like the lawn association or the turf grass association, something like that. It was basically an association for front lawn, so it was front lawn propaganda pretty much. And they were talking about how when you cut your lawn and then you should leave like the grass scraps on there because they'll break down and um yes i've heard the soil that's good. nutrients yeah mm-hmm. why why do we remove the leaves you're i you're advocating for the same thing as leaving the le- like it's the same thing literally we can leave the grass scraps but we have to remove the leaves we have to spend know, hours crazy. taking away the leaves and then sending them off to some random place. I think one one argument pro leaves is that okay. I used to jump into the piles when I was a kid and it was a lot of fun. It's true. There <laughs> is enjoyment. But you could still rake yes. them and put them in a pile and then just leave them there. Yeah. Okay. Here's what we do with our leaves is we rake them underneath our um, coniferous tree. Ooh. Um, I don't remember what kind of tree. It's an evergreen, right? So it's got the spikes and it's got like the low bottom. So like, you can't really see underneath. And we just like rake all the leaves underneath this like pine tree. I know I've said three different types of trees at this point, but you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's the spiky trees that are like thick in the bottom. It's a Christmas tree basically, right? And like we just put all the leaves underneath there. And like my cat used to make little beds under there with all the leaves that we put under. Like we would get home after like being away for four hours and she was sleeping in a little leaf bed. <laughs> It that is the cutest thing. thing. I know. And like we would look under it sometimes when we lost a soccer ball under there or something. And like it would be like the shape of her in like this leaf bed. It was the cutest fucking thing. So I would just like to add that animals fucking love that shit. Like it yeah. would add to the amount of animals that can survive in your place. Like squirrels need that shit to build their nests. Yes. Birds. Raccoons. I know nobody likes raccoons, but I think I think I love raccoons. Be- I was going to say, That's actually I think one that the, of my points for another podcast. 
Okay. <laughs> that raccoons are cute. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> but they're just the best I animal. Think, I think social media is changing people's outlook on raccoons. Everybody is suddenly seeing raccoons as just this cute little creature and like just this little thing that you could bring into your house if you wanted to, you know? They're just they're just cute. Please don't do well, that. I don't know. But, well, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't. <laughs> but they're basically just bandit cats, you know? Like, they're so sweet. They're adorable. <laughs> I love raccoons. Little trash monsters. They're cute. But Wanna yeah. know a fact I learned about squirrels the other day? Yeah. You know how they are like super forgetful? Squirrels? No. Yeah. That, you know, okay. okay, so they plant like a bunch of nuts for the winter. Mm-hmm. And then by the time that the summer comes, they forget about most of the nuts. <laughs> okay. That's so cute. But Is because they grow. Yeah. Oh, she because they forget. <laughs> no, no, no. You guessed it. It's good. Because they forget about their nuts. They literally plant entire forests. They're one of the biggest reasons that oak trees, is it oak trees that drop acorns? I think it Uh, is. Maybe, yeah. Acorns. Whatever trees drop acorns. They're one of the biggest reasons that that tree species has survived because squirrels bury them and then forget about them and then they grow into trees. (laughs) We stand squirrels on this podcast. Love squirrels. (laughs) That's so cute. Oh. oh my god, dude. Man, so what would your takeaway be for people who have a front lawn and take good care of it? Like, what would, what, what would you want them to do with this information? Take a moment. Think about your priorities. Okay? <laughs> We're living in 2020. I realize it's a pan- pandemic. It's a whole... It's not a pandemic. No, it's not. It's a Polaroid. I realize there's a Polaroid (laughs) happening right now. And we might have a little bit more time than we normally have. But in normal life, we don't have a lot of time in our lives. We're working a lot. We got a lot of expectations. There's a lot going on in the world. And you're spending a lot of that time maintaining a front lawn for no reason. Mm -hmm. You're actively killing the environment in a lot of ways by trying to maintain that one plant. So just think about your life, think about your priorities, think about how you want to spend your time. That's the advice I have for you. That's some really good advice. I appreciated that. I think we should definitely be trying to plant more wildflowers as well. Keep the bees mm. alive. Plant some lavender. Just do the Go earth crazy. Favor. Go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> your front lawn is your canvas. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to have Add a little spice. Grass, might as well add a little spice. Might as well yeah. add some freaking daisies, yeah. some roses. Fuck it up, yeah. Tomatoes. Obviously, mm-hmm. the squirrels are going to eat them and the bunnies are going to eat okay, them. Okay, hold but... on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Use your front lawn to grow food. What an idea. What an grow idea. Grow yourself some food. Then you won't <laughs> have to buy it. it. Yeah, It's healthy. Exactly. It's good for the environment. <laughs> Uh, I was just thinking about um, how in British Columbia, it's or on the island at least, in uh, Vancouver Island, you have to put fences around your food because the deer will come and eat it. <laughs> so they have like, they have like 10 by 10 like fences around their gardens. Deers and, like, can jump just so compact- high. Oh my god, it's so, so funny. Every single garden. Do you think it's so ugly? Like in anywhere that's not British Columbia. Like nobody does that. (laughs) But then you go to BC and even the bougiest, even the eleven million dollar houses have these ugly ass gates, these ugly (laughs) fences around their around their plants because the deer are insane. (laughs) Deers are the raccoons of Vancouver Island. They They are. are. We love raccoons. Can't stand the deer. I mean, I love the deer because I'm. Oh, no, you're against the deer now. No, I love <gasps> the deer because I'm new here, but I feel like if you've lived here for a long time, you probably are tired of the deer. Yeah. Because they're eating yeah, all your yeah. food. I got a garden tower and I planted a bunch of stuff in it. And every time something grows, it just gets eaten and chopped off. So, yeah, I've had it for, I want to say, three or four months and <laughs> never harvested from it because every time it like slightly grows, the deer eat it. <laughs> Yeah, so I bought a garden so tower funny. to feed the deer. The climate is so moderate, too. <laughs> like, you can yeah. grow things all season around, and you just haven't been able I'm to just, pick anything. I'm just feeding the deer. Just feeding the deer. Oh, that's so funny. Do the earth a favor. Feed the deer. <laughs> <laughs> so that deer was my opinion. Get... I don't like front lawns. Really... 
really interesting. Thank you for that, yeah. Courtney. That was, I have sources. If anybody... It was such a roller coaster. A lot of that information was not my own. Please don't come at me for plagiarize... Pl- plagiarize... Plagiarism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're plagiarism. Plagiarism. the word. <laughs> I... <laughs> I do have sources if you want to know them. I will. Yeah, let you I do know. too. So if you ever want to know, just let us know. We can, we can let you know. Yeah. I have a few. Should I say that? it's fine? Just ask me. And I'll we add it into the description. I don't think so. I think it's gonna clutter the description if we do that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're and right. it's gonna we make. Have the music. It's gonna like make people think that this is a podcast where people say really smart things. Ooh, you're right. We don't want that. <laughs> And they're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> so. Yeah, you're totally right. All right. How's your life going? Any updates? Yeah, real quick. What's I want to tell you about um, my surfing experience, right? So I want to learn how to surf, as we talked about last week. Oh, yeah. And um, I wanted to do that by moving to Tofino. Mm. But I was looking up jobs in Tofino. And apparently, right now, the hotel and uh, resort industry is just not popping. <laughs> because of the photo album <laughs> that was a bad one because of the p- because of the perishable Placenta. food item <laughs> <laughs> because- <laughs> why it was the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> you had to come at me with this. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Wait, because of that problem, <laughs> the um the industry isn't really booming right now, so they're not hiring a lot of entry level job positions. So um the competition would be steep for um any type of like management thing i'm gonna i'm gonna try obviously i'm gonna try anyways mm-hmm. and who knows what's gonna happen in a couple months you know maybe those positions will open up keep your so eye out you never know going for look it. in victoria too <laughs> there's a lot of tourism jobs in victoria okay yeah i will um today when i was on my walk with my parents i was like telling them about how badly i wanted to learn how to surf my dad was like don't you need an ocean to learn how to do that and i was like yes there is an ocean Thanks, Dad. in <laughs> Colombia. <laughs> and then my mom, listen to this, she goes, don't you need to be fit to surf? <laughs> I was like, ma. I can't believe your mom said that. That's... I know. It's so savage. That's a lot. That's a lot. I went mean... surfing and I stood up and I'm not that fit. Yeah. I think you just have to have good balance and a little bit of determination. I agree. And also, we were on a three-hour hike. (laughs) I was like, what do you think I'm doing right now? (laughs) Why did you bring me here? (laughs) Am I not being fit? (laughs) Oh, Oh, boy. So now I have to do it to prove them. you gotta. You gotta. (laughs) Anything else? You gotta update us on? Um... Yeah, you still need to tell the story about your treehouse. Or was it the robe? Um, was it the hotel? There's, there's a story? So, okay. So, Junaid and I went away for the night to the, to the spheres. And the spheres were a lot of fun. But I have to tell you about the hike that we went on before the spheres. Mm-hmm. Okay? This was like the hike from absolute hell. <laughs> it was literally something out of my nightmares. The what? first half of the hike was really great. It was super fun. We were in this like beautiful forest, forest, super mossy. It was raining like a little bit, but not too much. Mm. So it just kind of made it like misty and really cool. And then there was this point where you had to cross the highway. You had to go under a highway. You randomly hit a highway and had to go under. Okay. And that's when shit <laughs> hit the fan. <laughs> what? I mean, the trail after that was really... It was kind of like an obstacle course that was really fun in a sense. So we knew we had to check into the spheres at 3.30. Mm -hmm. So I was keeping track of how much time we had been out there and how much time we would need to get back. And I knew that once we hit 2 o'clock, it would be around the hour 30 mark. So I knew that we would need to turn around once we hit 2 o'clock. And we kind of encountered somebody on the trail and they told us that at the end of the trail, there were like seven 
huge, beautiful waterfalls. Whoa. So we really wanted to get to the end of this trail. We we're like, oh my God, we did not know that. We we're getting closer and closer to two o'clock and like two o'clock hit. And we looked at the map and we were so close to getting to the end. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we're just going to push on for 10 more minutes. It has to be around the next corner. It's okay. We got this. So mm-hmm. we pushed on for 10 more minutes. And then I checked the map in 10 minutes and we literally had not moved. I still don't what? know how that worked, but I looked at my map and we were in the exact same spot. It's so weird. It was so weird. So I was like, okay, we're going to have to turn around. We have to go back. We are now like, we're going to have to run half of it because we just wasted 10 minutes going further and we're gonna have to make up that 10 minutes Mm -hmm. so we turn around and we start like running back Mm. and (laughs) this is okay I don't know what happened but we somehow I we were going straight we stayed on the trail we were Mm -hmm. going straight but all of a sudden the trail that we were on literally turned into nothing what like the trail (gasps) just stopped And we're in the middle of the forest, and there was this undergrowth that was liney and leafy. So if you stood in it, like, you couldn't see your knees. Like, it was so deep. You couldn't push through it. So we're like, okay, this is weird. We thought we were on the trail, but the trail just ended. So we're like, okay, let's backtrack and see if we can find another trail to go on. So we did that, and then we went up another trail. We're, like, five minutes up that trail, and the same thing happens. The trail just literally stops. Like, it's going and then just stops. Dude, that sounds like something of freaking goosebumps. That is so It was so literally scary. a nightmare. <laughs> and that, that went on for like 15 minutes. Every trail we took would literally just stop. And I was full-blown panic. I was I freaking out. It was also after 3 o'clock and the sun sets at mm-hmm. like 4, 4.15 right now. Mm-hmm. So I knew that we probably weren't going to make it back before the sun sets. Yeah. And then... So we decided that we were going to try to push through this undergrowth because we knew the direction that we needed to go. We could hear the highway. So we were just going to try to bushwhack our way through. And Mm -hmm. as we're doing that, this is like one of the scariest parts. We just hear this singing behind us. Stop it. And I turn around and there's, there's this girl. She's all alone, literally crashing through this underbrush singing to herself doesn't acknowledge us you can hear her like crashing straight through singing was the scariest fucking thing (laughs) i like i lost it i i don't think i've ever been so panicked in my entire life i was so i feel so bad that i was like i don't give a fuck we need to get we need to get out of here i was like i don't care we're getting out of here we need to go i need to not be here (laughs) oh my god i would have done the exact thing that is so scary oh my god yeah we it's eventually <laughs> went back and found the trail i don't know how oh. we missed it <laughs> but we wasted like yeah we wasted a good 20 to 15 minutes and then we had to run the entire hour left of the trail so that oh we make it back a before the sunset and b so that we could check into the spheres oh my god so it was an oh. awful hike I did not like it. That sounds Um, terrifying. That sounds like something out of a horror movie. It literally was. That could have ended so badly. Yeah. 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 It's so scary. Oh my god. Yeah. But we checked into the spheres and we had a wonderful night. They were the coolest thing ever. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) Just to turn the page real quick. They're like made by this guy. He used to be a ship maker. Um, Mm -hmm. So they're kind of like built almost like ships and they're these little spheres. They hang in the trees. They move every time you like step and they sway. So it literally feels like you're swinging and it was raining all night. How did they stay up in the tree? Like they're literally tied with rope To a tree? To the trees. Like to a few trees because they're pretty big. But yeah, they're just tied in. I wonder what the liability on that is. Like tree falls. We have to sign a waiver. my fault. Oh, (laughs) you did? Yeah. (laughs) That's funny. Yeah, we <laughs> they've never fallen though. They've been there for like 18 years and they've never fallen. Mm, so I felt okay, pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I trusted. I trusted. Wow. Cool. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. And then I unknowingly, to just touch on my intro a little bit, I unknowingly packed the belt of a robe into my luggage when I was getting ready to go <laughs> and didn't notice. And then I got home and the lady from the hotel texted me. She found my number. She texted me and she was like, hey, do you have the belt to my robe? 
So and random. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do. So I had to mail it back today. Uh, I paid $15 to mail it back. Oh, God. Oh, the and the next day we person. went back and we did the hike again. I would just like to point that out. Yeah, we did, did? the hike again. We did. And it was Why? actually... Because we hated the feeling of letting the trail defeat us and having <laughs> such <laughs> negative thoughts about a place on the island because we really love the island. Yeah. So we went back and we just did the second half, like after the highway, the part that we got lost, we did that part mm-hmm. again. But it was daylight. We started kind of early and I knew that we had no place to be after. So we didn't have that like time crunch. And we made it to the waterfalls, and they were literally the coolest thing ever. And it's oh, wow. actually now our favorite <laughs> hike that we've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that's that wild? Such a growth, that's a really growth mindset. I'm very is, proud of you. It is. That's, that's pretty yeah. intense. It could have gone really. could have gone. And it was funny oh because you're we walking back through the forest, and I must have completely, like, blacked out when I was panicking because I did not remember yeah. any of it. I was oh like, my walk god! Walk here yesterday. You... I think we're off the trail, and he was like, "No, we were literally here, like twelve oh hours ago. We walked past this tree." And I was like, "I, I don't remember any of it." Holy shit! That sounds so scary. Oh my god, Courtney, that's awful. Well, I'm glad you ended it in a in a pretty okay experience. Yeah, it was that's really cool. Now it's, just oh, <laughs> now it's just a good story. Good story. We know now that we might have to pack a tent with us when we go hiking. Just in case we get stranded in the forest, but it's okay, oh guys. Gosh, that's so oh, scary. Okay. It was fun. It's fine. The island is dangerous. It is dangerous, but it's also really cool. Yeah. I hope you never have to go through that again. Honestly, it's a good story, though. Thanks. Thank you for sharing Thanks. it on the podcast. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, hope I hope you all, you enjoyed, all enjoyed that it. terrifying thing. Hope you don't have too many nightmares about the intubator and about this creepy ass fucking hike getting stranded in the, of the forest. Have- very dark lives very dark thoughts and experiences but mm. i'm sorry everyone but we're seriously it's not that serious <laughs> it's honestly not that serious like it's not Courtney's that serious. fine she I'm lets fine. us tell another tale lydia's fine we have a plan for the zombie apocalypse yeah. now it's fine <laughs> i'm so sorry if this podcast is like alarmingly longer than the last one we made let us know. How Let long? us know what you liked more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How um, long can you tolerate this? So okay. that brings us to the end of the podcast. Yay. Thank you guys Yay. for s- listening. Thank you for sticking around. If you had opinions, if you had feelings while we were talking, please let us know. You can find us on Twitter at very unimportant people, and that's very dot unimportant dot people. And by Twitter, you she can- means Instagram. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at very unimportant people, and that's very dot unimportant dot people. We also have an email, which is haters click here, haters as in H A T. RS and then click here at gmail.com. I think that's all the platforms we have now. And thank you for following us on Instagram. Thank you to all of us. Thank you in advance for following us on Instagram. (laughs) We really appreciate that. Yeah, thanks, guys. (laughs) Also, let us know if there's any opinions you want us to discuss. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to comment on your opinions. Tune in next week. Hang out with us again talk with us again chill with us thank you for letting us be a part of your lives whether you're doing homework whether you're eat, drinking coffee eating dinner driving whatever you're doing we're just glad to be a part of it and to hang out with you as well yeah thanks guys have a great 